Hello everyone. Welcome back to Learn with Techies. In this video, we will cover the remaining topics from the past videos. That is logical operators, bitwise operator, relational operator, and we will finish this off with some practice exercises. Now let's talk about logical operators. Logical operators are used to check whether an expression is true or false. They are basically used for decision making. So there are three major type of logical operators: AND, OR, and NOT. So NOT is technically a unary operator, but it's also added into logical operators because it always gives gives result in a true or a false variant. So let's start with this first ampersand ampersand. It is also called AND. So if you see in the diagram, we are saying expression one ampersand ampersand expression two. Let's start with ampersand ampersand. So what we have basically we have an expression one, and then we can add this AND. and then expression 2 so what we are saying this expression and this expression if both the value is true then only this whole expression will be true if either of this is false then this whole expression result will be false it's something like suppose i say to make tea so for example suppose i say to make tea i need milk and tea bag so what i'm saying if i have milk so what i'm saying if i have milk and and if i have tea bags then only i will make a tea if i don't have milk or if i don't have tea bag like if either of this condition if if i either do not have milk or i don't have a tea bag then i can't make the tea so in the same way what we are saying here is like if this first expression value is true and this is true then this whole condition will be true else if expression 1 or expression 2 is false either of that then it will be a result will be false let's quickly try it with some example and a equals to 12 and i am saying there is a boolean this will always the logical operators always give the results in boolean only because they are kind of making decision okay is it true or is it false so if i say like okay is a greater than 12 and b greater than 10 this ampersand ampersand means and so if both of this condition is true then only this rest value will be true so i'll write i'll just print it out so here a value is not greater than 13 so this value will be false and b Let me put it eleven. B is not greater than eleven, so this is also false. So false and false. It will give the result as false. So if I run this up, let me print it up for more clarity. Let me print it both of them in another variable. So now if I print this up. So expression one is false. Expression two is false. So the result is also false. If I change it to something like this, and then run this up. So now a is greater than nine, which is true because a is twelve, and this expression is just checking for greater than nine. So this expression one will be true now. So if I run it again, we'll see. Okay, expression one is true. Expression two is false. But since we are using and, that means If both of this condition is true, then only the result will be true. So if I change something to this to, let me change it back to. So now what we are saying, expression one is false because a is not greater than six or seven, but expression two is true. That is b is greater than five. If I run it again, it will say okay. Expression one is false. Expression two is true, but still it is false because both of them has to be true. Now let me change both of them. clear this up and run it again so this time the value will be true because expression 1 is also true expression 2 is also true so and and is this expression can only be true because we are using and when both of this is true so since both of this is true so the result is also true to give you guys more idea i have created this table so if you see this is the expression 1 value this is the expression 2 value and this is the result so if expression 1 is true and expression 2 is true 
then we are getting the result as true. If expression 1 is true and expression 2 is false, then we are getting the result as false because one of them is false. In the same way, if expression 1 is false and expression 2 is true, then also we get the result as false because one of them is false. And if expression 1 is false and expression 2 is false, then it's automatically is false because both of them are false now. So now moving on to its alter ego, the OR operator. So in OR operator, what we see that this is OR operator or a log, uh, pipe operator basically. So when once we write it like expression 1 or expression 2, what we are saying that this whole expression will be true if either of the expression 1 or expression 2 is true. Like one of them could be false and the other is true, then also this will result into true. So it's like an OR condition. OR expression 2. So for example, I want to visit you. You invite me to your house and I'll say that okay. I can either come by a cab or I can come by a bus. So what I'm saying is like, so what I'm saying is like if I get a cab or if I get a bus that like I don't need both of them. If I could get either a cab or a bus, then I could visit you. If I get neither, then is the only scenario I can't visit you. Like if I get a cab early and not a bus, then also I can visit you because I will come by cab. If I get a bus and not a cab then also I can visit you because I have the bus but if I don't get both of them then only I will not visit you and if I get both of them like if I as soon as I go on the road I can see a cab and bus both of them and then I'll take the cab because this is what I get first so I'll take this and visit you I will not even check for bus because as soon as I come in here I see that okay cab is there so I'll just take this so this is what this OR operator is like either this expression 1 is true or this expression 2 is true, then I'll visit you. So let's check this out with some example on the Visual Studio code. So I'll take the same expression that we have earlier. I'll use the same one that we used earlier and I just change it to OR. So now what I'm saying and let me change it to 67. So here what we are saying that okay expression 1 is false because A is not greater than 67 but expression 2 is true because B is greater than 5. So since we are using an odd operator, so the result will be true. So if I run this up, if you see, it's saying expression 1 is false, expression 2 is true. So the result is true because we are using an odd operator. In the same way, if I change this one and if I add something like, and then I run it again. So here, the expression 1 is true because A is greater than 6. Expression 2 is false because B is not greater than 50. B is 10. But I use the OR operator, so the result will still be true because we have one true scenario here. Now let me change both of them. So here, expression 1 is also false because A is not greater than 60. Expression 2 is also false because B is not greater than 50. So here, since both of these are false, then we will get the result as false. Let me clear this up and run it again. So here expression 1 is false, expression 2 is false. So the whole result is false. So by going back into the same table, here if you see, this this is the same table. Now we are using it for OR operator. So if the first expression, so here the first expression is true and the second expression is also true. So the result is true because both of them are true. In the second case, first expression is true and the second one is false. Then also the result is true because we have one true scenario here. In the third one, the first expression is false and the second one is true. Then also the result is true because one of them is true. And the fourth scenario, for both expression 1 is also false and expression 2 is also false. So the result is false. It's like, so the result will be false. Now the last operator that we have is a NOT operator. Since we are already covered it as a part of unary operator, so I'll not cover that out. But this is a table for the NOT operator also. So if you see, if the expression 1 value is true, then the result will be false. If the expression 1 value is false, then the result will be true because it's the exact opposite of that. Now let's talk about one more variation of logical operators, bitwise operators. Bitwise operators works on bit and perform bit by bit operation. There are three different type of bit operators, ampersand, logical and, or, an exclusive or. Now, logical operators and bitwise operators kind of look the same. If you see the example also here for AND and OR, they kind of 
are same like basically what we are saying here for and it's like expression 1 and expression 2 both are true then only this will be true else it will be false in the same way for or also we are saying okay expression 1 or expression 2 if either of them is true then only this whole expression will be true if either of them uh, like either of them is true then only this expression will be true so the logical operator and bitwise operator both may look same but there is an inherent difference between both of them while bitwise operators works on bits and perform bit by bit expression so here when once i'm doing expression one and expression two it kind of goes into the bit and do a bit by bit op operations for both but the logical operators used to work on conditions like it used to take both this expression one as a boolean value and this expression two as a boolean value and then used to combine them to get the results in further videos, we will learn more about bitwise operators, how they exactly function and where do we use that. I will also post some link in the description section of the video if you want to learn more about bitwise operators. But in present context, I want to talk about one scenario where bitwise is useful over the logical operator. This scenario is called short circuit. So let's go into an example so that I can quickly show you. So this is a new example that I have written. If you see here, I have created a new variable. And then we, I have created some other variables also. And basically I have assigned it using one int. Like I did not use int a equals to 3, int c equals to 1, int d equals to 0. Basically this is also a way you can initialize a variable. If you write it like this, what this means basically like c and d both are using this int variable. Basically c and d both of them are int variables because we are separating it with comma. Now, if, you, if I would have used semicolon, like how we use for every statement, then this would have given an error because by semicolon, compiler knows that, okay, this statement has ended. So, then we have to go ahead and add an int d. But since I was using a comma, so compiler knows that, okay, this expression is still continuing. So, you can use this int a variable to declare all of these variables and assign all of the other variables. This is one expression. If a is greater than 4, then I have used the ampersand, ampersand, a logical operator. And then this is a operation that I am using. What it is doing is like, it's saying, okay, b equals to c plus 3. c is 1. So, 1 plus 3 equals to 4. So, we are saying, okay, b equals to 4, basically. And then, what we are saying, okay, 4 is greater than 1. Here, now, b value will be changed to 1 plus 3, 4, because that's how we are doing the assignment, and then we are uh, checking, comparing it with 1. So, ideally, if a will be greater than 4, and this whole expression, that is 4, will be greater than 1, then you can and reinitialize uh, d variables values. So let me run this up. A is 3. That's okay. B is 2. So now that is a little bit surprising because what we assumed that it will check. Okay, A is greater than 4. It's a false. Then it will go into this expression. It will run. Okay. B equals to C. That is 1 plus 1. Uh, 1 plus 3. So it will make. Okay. B equals to 4. And then it will do. Okay. 4 is greater than 1. It's true. But since this is true and this is false so it will come out of the expression so what our assumption was that once this expression is executed so b will be equal to 1 plus 3 that is 4 but that's not happening because b we are seeing is still 2 so why is it happening so this is where so this is where a term called short circuiting is being used so what's happening here like this expression is not getting executed why it's not getting executed so that's how logical operators work so as soon as the compiler checks this okay a is greater than 4 it says okay 3 is not greater than 4 that means this condition is false so what compilers think since we are using a ampersand ampersand that is and so we know that okay this expression like this expression also has to be true and this expression has to be true and now since the compiler knows that okay this expression is not true so it's thinking like it's not even useful to go into this expression because why we will check it because we already know that this is not true so this will never be executed so it as soon as it sees that first condition is not true it kind of come out of this loop it not even check the second expression so this is called short circuiting now suppose if we would have used something like bitwise operator here if i would have run it so surprise now b is 4 so b that is 1 plus 3 4 so the rest of the result remains same it's th still 3 a still it's 4 and still the c is 1 and d is 0 because still since bitwise operator kind of works like logical operators also only so it knows that okay this expression is false 
and this expression is true so it will not go into this line number 8 so for uh, d is 0 only that means this line is not getting executed but if you see b is equal to 4 now so why is it happening because that's how bitwise work bitwise will check both of the scenario whether one is true whether other is not true or in regardless of that it will go into both of the expression and check it and then only it will provide the result so that's why here it goes into this it provides b equals to 1 plus 3 and it changes b value to 4 so now if we go back to odd operator so this sort circuiting also helps in odd operator so how is that let me add this and let me change a equals to 2 so what we are saying here that okay a is greater than 2 this is true so idly it will go and it will change it so let me run this clear it up and let me run it up so if you see okay a is value is 3 that's okay b value is 2 still it's 2 c value is 1 and d value is 35 that means it's executing this expression so now again the short circuiting come into play so the compiler goes into this expression and check okay 3 is greater than 2 it says true then it does not even check this expression because it's a operate odd operator so compiler knows that if either of this will be true then it does not then it will be true this whole scenario will be true so as soon as it checks that okay the first expression is true it does not even go into the, the second expression to check that and it automatically okay it checks okay the first expression is true let's move on to this line number eight and initialize it so here also short circuiting is coming into play now here also if i change it to bitwise operator if i clear this up and run it again so here a is 3 now b is 4 again why because we have added a bitwise operator so in bitwise operator like we have already discussed regardless of whether this first expression is true first expression is false it will go and evaluate both of the expression before coming into the true loop or false loop or whatever it is it will always check both of the expression so that's why now b is equal to 1 plus 3 4 so that's why we are getting b as value as 4 so now let's move on to the last operator of today relational operator so it's like relational operator is same as how we used to have in mathematics the greater than sign greater than equal to less than sign not equal to so most of them are self-explanatory so i'll just quickly go into visual studio code and show you how all of these are being used this is our first example so first thing we are talking about is greater than sign so it's simply how it works in mathematics we, we are checking okay 2 is 2 greater than 6 the result will be false so this is the relational operator that we are using here so if i run it the result will be false now suppose if i change it to 2 so here what do you think the result will be so is 2 greater than 2 the result is false 2 is not greater than uh, 2 so in these scenarios where we have to check okay 2 is greater than or equal to both of the scenario like either should be greater than or it should be equal to 2 then we use this operator what this says like it's greater than and equal to so if i run it now it will give true because b which is 2 is greater than or is equal to 2 so if i change it to 9 then also it will be true because it's either greater than or it's equal to 2 in both scenario it will give true result now in the same way let's talk about less than so if we are saying something like this less than 2 so first condition will be false here we are saying it's false why because b is not less than 2 suppose i add it like equals to also here so what we are saying here is like b should either be less than 2 or should be equal to 2 so here if i run it up it will give result as true because b is equal to 2 which is less than equal to 2 now if i change it to minus 17 378 let's clear this up so the result should be true because minus 378 is less than equal to 2 now there is another scenario another operator here equal equals to that is used when we want to compare whether it's equal to 2 or not so like here if i run this this will be false as of now because it's not equal to 2 this is minus 378 b and we are trying to compare it with 2 so it will be false now if i change it to 
2 and run it up. It will be true because b is equal to true. Now suppose if we have to check is not equal to true. So we use something like this. So this symbol means is not equal to 2. So if I run this up now, right now it will be false. This rest will be false because b is equal to 2 and we are trying to compare is not equal to. So that's why it's a false. Now if I change it to 20 and then if I try to run it again, this time it will be true because 20 is not equal to 2. So basically these are the four relational operators that we will use most of the time in our code. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us in our journey and do post your valuable feedback, suggestions or if there are any other topics that you want us to cover in the comment section of this video. Till then, have a nice day, keep on practicing and see you again in our next video.